Thank you. Thank you, and thank for organizer of uh, Code Blue conference uh, for all this stuff. It's brilliant. I'm Sergey. I'm Alex. And uh, we now to speak on behalf of SCADA Strange Lab security team. Uh, in working hours, we work for different security companies, but here we to introduce uh, uh, collective uh, efforts to build more security industrial control system. And this is a list of uh, participants of SCADA Strange Love team. And I would like to ask you to give your big hands for all guys who works together with us. Thank you. So, situation with vulnerabilities in uh, SCADA network and SCADA devices uh, become much better since 2010 when Stuxnet worm was introduced, but still we need a lot of efforts to make more secure industrial control system. Today we will speak about power, about electricity, and I think it's very important here in Japan because, as you can see, Japan is number five in the list of uh, uh, power producers in the world. Uh, now, uh, power grids follow smart grid concept. Uh, what is smart grid? Uh, we have a lot of uh, sources of uh, energy and we had a lot of customers who uh, get energy and use it uh, for their needs. And the uh, number of generators and uh, consumers uh, become uh, more and more. And we need a very uh, sophisticated system which will uh, interconnect each other and exchange information about number of energy generated and consume it. Why? Uh, because we need to, car uh, we cannot store electricity like we cannot, uh, like we can store, for instance, oil. We need to generate it instantly and instantly uh, uh, consume it. So, uh, in first part of our talk, we will speak about communication issues and issues related to customers or green energy uh, sources of electricity. Well, uh, the first uh, we decided to go deeper in this kind of uh, systems, uh, to go deeper in our research uh, was based on the joke in the internet, in, uh, especially in Twitter. And uh, there was a joke about where is uh, that light that absorbs is lost forever in solar uh, plants, solar panels. And uh, next was uh, that we find out that most uh, PV plants based on, on the system called system on chip, one of the most uh, uh, widely spread system, it's called IPC at chip. Well, it, it uses our TOS, real-time uh, multitasking operation system uh, with uh, TCP IP stack protocols, uh, with uh, popular servers like web server, and uh, it uh, consists and uses some kind of security protocols. But uh, we find out that simply through web interface without authentication, we can uh, download a chip configuration script. Well, one of the system based on IPC at chip, it's a logo, solar lock uh, system by solar lock vendor. And uh, it uses, uh, it connect, it's, uh, sorry, it, connect, it uses a connection from inverters worldwide spread and aggregate information about uh, distributed energy on the inverters. And simply solar log system uh, can, uh, using uh, uh, about uh, one million inverters, which worldwide, 
spread. <coughs> For example, in Germany, you can see the map of the connected to the solar lock IPC chip system. There are a lot of devices just simply for Germany. Well, uh, how, how to find out uh, these devices? Well, first approach, it's very simple, just simply using uh, Google Dorks. And uh, we can find out uh, Google Dorks on some configuration scripts, but uh, moreover, we can use it uh, freely available firmware. And using simply strings, we can find out uh, Google Dork Solar Logs status and simple direct search on the Google we can see that about 65,000 of solar log inverters connected to the web and it uses uh, uh, sorry and uh, it uh, uh, connect to the web and Google knows about it well a uh, brief overview of the web interface give us uh, possibility without it's a very important <laughs> without uh, authentication to download configuration of the solar log system uh, sorry not configuration it's system backup well a brief overview of system backup uh, give us uh, some kind of encryption of the user passwords but as you, as you know and uh, it's not just simple encry uh, encryption it's just simple xorin well, another one findings well, in the firmware uh, update uh, procedure uh, was uh, that we simply sniffing and uh, looking at the HTTP request, we can see that we can uh, simply replace system any system file on uh, solar log. Well, uh, we coordinated with third bound and uh, this uh, vulnerabilities was uh, fixed. Thanks, Serbant. Well, another one uh, popular solar uh, system, it's uh, by uh, Germany vendor SMEA, uh, Sunny Webex, and simply using Shodan uh, and uh, Google, uh, and, and Dorks for Shodan, we can find out about 80,000 devices connected uh, to the web. It's just only for Europe countries. Well, uh, first findings was about four years ago, and it was a very popular uh, vulnerability for this kind of devices. It's the default uh, password. Well, it was SMEA password uppercase, but when we take a look uh, at the official documentation for Sunny Webex system, we find out another one uh, default passwords. It's SMEA uh, lowercase. Well, okay, it's just only for installer. Well, uh, authentication process for Sunny Webex based only on password, but uh, without a username. And uh, based on the password, uh, Sunny Webex give you a kind of role. It's like a user and installer. Well, next one findings what it's not only SMEA uppercase and lowercase default passwords, but only, uh, but also uh, for zeros and for ones for user and installer user, user groups. Okay, so we decided to go deeper and uh, uh, observed uh, solar, uh, sorry, sunny Webex uh, applications and uh, find out. Uh, you can see on the left slide uh, part of slide that it's, it has not only user and installer roles, but also servers and developer. For what the reason to have this kind of roles? And uh, another one interesting findings was uh, uh, passwords modes like uh, hard-coded PV. What does it mean? I think you should know about it. So password in uh SMA, Sunny Webbox, uh, hard coded, very hard. Uh, but how much energy we can control uh, with these very simple vulnerabilities? Uh, the main page of this uh, device uh, shows the number of energy produced by PV plants. So using Google Cache, we can get inform this information and can calculate amount of energy generated by the grid of uh, such devices. 
So we able to extract from Google uh, information about 100 of megawatts of instance power. If we will uh, compare this amount of energy with different sources, it's like a small hydro uh, electric station somewhere in the Alps. So not so many, uh, but let's speak about wind, because uh, if uh, solar panels consume all the sun, when wind turbines consume all the winds, and it can make disaster. So we decide to save universe again. Uh, simple short and search again, and with short and search, we able to find about 500 of uh, wind devices. It's a, a Nordex uh, NC2 portal which uh, have a long history of vulnerabilities, but still connected to internet. You can see that first vulnerabilities was found in 2010. But the root problem with, uh, with this system was this based on very old web server. So it's run web server uh, version number three, Actual uh, version is number nine. So uh, Java and serverlet uh, layer does not support it by manufacturer already. But it's still used by uh, this system. So you can find a lot of vulnerabilities and you can find a lot of exploit which uh, can be used to bypass protection and get our unauthenticated access to such systems. Uh, what the difference between sun and wind? Uh, with uh, PV plants, uh, you work with passive device. So you have a solar panel, you have inverter, you have management system and software. With wind, you have a mechanical system. You have engines, you have brakes, you have a generator, and if you can manage uh, brakes or uh, engine, you can abuse it to make a physical disaster. So wind turbine from security point of view or safety point of view, I think physical safety, much more dangerous than solar. Okay, how much energy we can manage in this case? Again, the uh, root page of the Nordex NC2 portal uh, shows us amount of energy generated by the system, and again, instructed this uh, information from Google Cache we able to find about one gigawatt of instance power. Uh, comparing with different sources, it's uh, the same amount which generated by nuclear power plant in Boucher, which was infected by Stuxnet form. So to break into Boucher, uh, secret services of di different countries uh, prepared very sophisticated attack and malware. To uh, manage same amount of wind power, you need only very simple public vulnerabilities. And you can find uh, affected system via Google. This is scary. Uh, to resume this spot, uh, during very, very simple vulnerabilities, we able to find way to control about eight gigawatts of instance power. It's like a number five hydroelectric station, largest hydroelectric station in the world in Brazil. So it's good amount of energy. Um, 
first time this uh, finding was presented at uh, CCC, Chaos Communication Congress Conference in Germany. And based on feedback, we decided to establish SCADA SOS project. It's open project and everybody can contribute it. And the main goal of this project to find uh, devices, power grid devices in the internet, to find insecurities and to inform vendors and computer emergency response team about such issues. Here's an example. Uh, one of contributors put information about uh, uh, insecure V turbine configuration, about hard-coded password again. And uh, this information was shared with computer emergency response team and such vulnerabilities was fixed by the vendor. Also, uh, as one of result, uh, we able to force vendors to disconnect about uh, 60,000 of smart grid devices from the internet. Because, you know, awareness works. If you can show, dear vendor, you have 20,000 of your customers which can be immediately hacked by a schoolboy. Please care about your customer. Next point is global radio network. Why is global radio network are so important? Uh, radio network now use it everywhere in ATMs, in SCADA, in um, uh, our, our everyday lives. But radio network have a very huge attack surface, so you can attack it via different vector. It, now it uses uh, TCP IP protocol, so you can use your favorite attack toolkit to uh, find and exploit vulnerability. And what's important, it's global. So if you have vulnerability in a uh, mobile carrier somewhere in US, you can use these vulnerabilities to exploit mobile carrier in Japan. Why? Because it's interconnected. Let's uh, give an example. Uh, one of the simplest uh, way to find vulnerabilities in mobile carrier network, it's, a, uh, it's use uh, of vulnerabilities of IP boxes, of IP routers like GGSN, SGSN, because in general it's uh, IP devices with standard management interfaces and uh, you can find unsecured interfaces like Telnet, SNMP, etc., and exploit it. Sometimes uh, customer use uh, private APN. APN is connection string for GPRS, uh, uh, which uh, well known for different uh, 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 carrier. But sometimes you can use private APN, which unknown. And uh, many people believe that this kind of VPN. But in general, this is wrong. Uh, APN can be easily guessed and uh, use it with private connection string. You can get access to different IP connection via mobile network. Uh, another point is uh, uh, 4G radio security. Uh, theoretically, we believe that uh, current level of encryption uh, for LTE is okay. So uh, good ciphers, uh, strong encryption, authentication, but on practice, uh, many mobile carriers support uh, backward compatibility with 2G networks. So if you can mount man in the middle attack, so if you can be a fake base station, you can uh, downgrade authentication and encryption level and intercept any communication. Moreover, 
uh, Carson Noll on CCC uh, uh, demonstrated that in many countries uh, encryption is prohibited by law. So even 4G network runs unencrypted. But in many countries, even if encryption is allowed, uh, 4G encryption only is prohibited. Why? Because secret services need have ability to downgrade encryption level to lawful interception, to uh, catch bad guys, I think, terrorists, etc. But other guys can use this ability to downgrade encryption level and intercept communication. Another interesting point, it was presented uh, here in Japan uh, last year. It's uh, uh, advanced vulnerabilities in SIM cards. I think you know that SIM card is a computer running uh, Java. So if you can find vulnerability in application running on this chip, you can abuse it and exploit it. And it was demonstrated how via special crafted SMSs, you can obtain encryption keys and TMC, which stores on the uh, SIM card, or even install special crafted malware, special crafted Trojan Java applet on the SIM card, which will uh, survive uh, mobile handset uh, changing. So if you change your phone and install this SIM card in different phone, you still will be infected. Uh, and now, uh, one more very interesting area of security research is security of femta cell. What is femta cell? Femta cell is a small uh, brown based bed station, uh, mobile base station, uh, which you can use to extend coverage. So you can install femta cell in this room uh, to have good mobile coverage. But in most cases, femtocell is just a Linux box. If you can root it, you can intercept all communication between femtocell and mobile carrier. So you can mount man in the middle attack for 3G and 4G network because all communication will be decrypted on the femtocell radio communication you can intercept it, and I'll after encrypt it and through the IPsec tunnel submit to the mobile carrier. It was presented in different conferences, for instance, in Black Hat US 2015. Another interesting uh, topic presented by our team, it's vulnerabilities in 4G modems. It's a very common device. You can plug in your laptop and get access to the internet. But in most cases, uh, 4G modems, it's very sophisticated piece of software and hardware. Uh, it has different interfaces, it has storages, so you can hack it. So uh, let's try to guess how we can use vulnerabilities in 4G modems to get uh, access to host which uh, use uh, this modem for internet connection. I take control. Here's an example. So uh, this uh, modem was virusly hacked and firmware was updated. <coughs> After connection, it starts to work as a network device. At, and this is okay, because this is a modem. I'm sorry, Huawei. 
But after timeout, this device become a keyboard. And obviously, keyboard can type. No hands, but somebody typing. This is our modem. As a real hackers, it's a launch calculator. After it gets BIOS specification to understand uh, hardware specification of the laptop and reboot the computer. During reboot, this modem became a CD-ROM drive. Why? To boot this computer from the CD-ROM. And during boot, it's a style boot kit on this system and can bypass any security features on your device. We have a question for you. Uh, first one, who guess how to bypass security BIOS using this attack? Because now many laptops and devices have uh, security features and BIOS. Uh, we'll get a special prize from SCADA Strange Life team. So let's imagine that we have a password on the BIOS. So boot from the BIOS will, uh, from the USB will not work. But how to bypass this protection? Any guess? Come on, it's not a school. OK, BIOS is software. It interacts with different devices. To interact with devices, we need a in computers. Piece of software to interact with devices is a good. And driver have what piece of software? Any piece of software? What? Bugs. Excellent. Your price is yours. <laughs> so drivers have bugs. So BIOS have drivers for hard disk, for keyboard, for mice, and nobody care about vulnerabilities in driver of the mouse. Why? Because how to exploit remotely vulnerability in mice driver? Easy, we are bad USB. So it's huge attack surface. Printer drivers, mice drivers, uh, file system drivers, etc., etc. Uh, Travis Goodspeed and Sergey Bratus uh, had a good research on this, but where thinks about only local, local exploitation of such vulnerabilities. But such vulnerabilities can be exploited remotely. Uh, sometimes it can be exploited via internet. It's a sim again simple sh short and search can help you to find a lot of 4G modems which have web interface available via internet. So how it's related to uh, okay, thank you. How it's related to uh, SCADA security? Uh, obviously. Many industrial systems use special devices, uh, wireless uh, modems, wireless uh, routers to connect to central point, management point, etc. And obviously, these vulnerabilities can be applied to such system. But this is uh, a topic for our next talk, maybe on next conference. Alex? Well, uh a few steps back to the smart grids, uh, to wind turbines and engines. And uh, anybody already see the movie Black Hat? It's uh, 
is this here Hollywood movie? Well, if somebody didn't see it, uh, please close your e ears or disable your uh, translator device. I'm going to give you a short spoil about that movie. And uh, at the beginning of the movie, there are evil guy push the button, push, push the button, enter on the, his laptop and send some packets to a big uh, strange engine machine and uh, as a result is going to big physical disaster. Uh, unfortunately, from our experience, uh, it's a real scenario. Everybody knows that uh, about Hollywood, fairy tales Hollywood, but as I said, from our experience, it's a real type of attack because it's based uh, on the simple uh, protocols which can uh, increase or decrease speed of turbine, of wind machine and big uh, heavy machine engine and so on. Simply one, for example, UDP packet can change the physical uh, system. Well, uh, what about SCADA connected uh, to the internet? Uh, what about radio <coughs> antennas and so on? Uh, we find out uh, an article in some journal called Gamification of Agent-Based Smart Grids. Well, gamification, what does it mean? We was really impressed about this article and the Main idea was to connect all of the system, energy system, to some kind of social network and to create this uh, powerful uh, social network. And uh, the main idea was uh, to get possibilities for users to send uh, with some kind of social network, it's uh, in nowadays it's like a, a cloud, uh, cloud network to send uh, the data about uh, power generation and exchange between other users. So you can, you can show your neighbor, uh, look how many energy I generated, I'm safe for the, um, I don't know, oil, so I'm good guy. Why you generate so, not so much? Let's uh, work together to generate more energy and more. But this uh, have a back side. This approach have a yes. da dark side, sorry. It's a bad approach and uh, following to Sergei's idea, previous century we was proud about our big trucks, uh, a lot of money, but nowadays we should be proud about uh, the, how much energy we produce. And so, it, it was an idea to distribute SCADA system to the cloud. Well, and uh, one of the system who uh, go into this idea, it's SolarLog. Uh, SolarLog portal uh, get connected uh, a lot of devices to the system. And uh, well, simply it's a web-based system, web-based portal. And uh, there are the same as uh, another one, web systems vulnerabilities. Well, one of the vulnerabilities give, as a, uh, at, at the end, uh, as a result, is give uh, evil guy possibility to create, back connect to the home smart grid system. And in this case, it's uh, remote code execution and Evil guy just simply hack uh, a cloud portal can connect to all devices. But what about patch management? Yeah, this uh, sometimes to find vulnerability is the easiest part. Also, after this, as a white hat, you should fix it or force somebody to fix it. And sometimes it's create uh, troubles. For instance, when we first find vulnerability in solar log, we try to reach the vendor 
vendor uh, doesn't return any response. So we try to coordinate our activity with ICS CERT, it's US-based computer emergency response team, but we get a response that well, it's not interesting for them because this system not distributed in US. So we connected with uh, CERT Bund in Germany and thanks for them again for coordination. But in several months, we found that uh, General Electric will integrate solar walk system in smart meters. Uh, why it's important? Because uh, smart meters uh, share information about uh, amount of energy generated by PV plant, uh, not with the grid only, uh, I mean uh, uh, grid uh, uh, like a cloud, but with power grid also. So you can full power grid of the country. You can spoof amount of energy generated or consumed by this installation. For sure, uh, one PV plant generates a very small amount of energy, few kilowatts only. But if you can control thousands of plants, you can spoof uh, gigawatts of power and uh, you can fool the system and manage it to uh, change uh, power flow in the wrong direction. Just for demonstration, it's a short circuit on 10 kilowatts cable. It's like it looks like. 10 ki uh, uh, oh, sorry, megawatts. So it's, it's uh, uh, only few uh, towers in the city. I'm sorry. So after uh, a talk, we have a conversation with a German uh, electricity engineer, and he told us that European power grid have only three gigawatts of buffer. So if you can full management system for three gigawatts, you can uh, make the situation when uh, lights will go out for a long time. So this is scary. Next, we will talk about digital substations. Well, for digital substations, uh, one of the important part of security it's uh, release. Relay protection. Uh, relay protection. It's kind of protection uh, when something happened bad on the, some, uh, on the left side uh, from this picture. And uh, relay protection, close any connections, any physical activities uh, between uh, energy distribution uh, melts. Well, it's kind of firewall. Uh, between uh, problem site and uh, be between uh, f uh, real life site. Well, for relay protection, uh, uh, it based on IC61 family protocol, and we did uh, deep research about this kind of protocols and uh, created some toolkits to play with IC protocols. And uh, next, is our activity, how to find uh, vulnerabilities, how to uh, create community to uh, give possibilities uh, participants uh, to find out vulnerabilities. Uh, one of the first uh, was is uh, open laboratory at Positive Hack Days. It was uh, on Positive Hack Day 3 and it's called Choo Choo Pavan Laboratory. It was a uh, simulation of uh, uh, railway stations, uh, trains, and so on. Next one was uh, at Positive Hack Days 4. It calls, it called Critical Infrastructure Attack. And the main idea was to find out zero-day vulnerabilities 
and uh, the goals was uh, not only find out vulnerabilities but also make a disaster and create some kind of uh, practical uh, tools, practical uh, impact and so on. Toy yes. disaster, not yes. real disaster, yeah. Yes, exactly. And uh, there was uh, some targets, very popular, and I see a systems like Schneider Electric, Siemens, Rockwell, and so on. Well, after PhD days four, we got a lot of interesting vulnerabilities, and, uh, and only for two days, we got more than 10 zero days, and one of the winners was Alisa from Message Lab. He, uh, sorry, she found out uh, binary vulnerabilities, a lot of vulnerabilities in uh, Schneider Electric software. Well, and of course, we, uh, these vulnerabilities, we uh, uh, share following uh, by response disclosure policy. And also, Next one, and the, uh, this year was uh, Positive Hack Day's uh, digital substation takeover. It was quite interesting, uh, 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 but uh, how to say it? it was challenge. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> Very interesting challenge for participants. And uh, sorry. And uh, the main result was to create and make a disaster on the melt, cable melt. Well, uh, there are another one, vulnerabilities. So, uh, it was a real hardware, but toy power. Uh, and uh, the goal of participants was, was to find the way how to uh, make a toy disaster. And you saw uh, the grid overload, which was created using vulnerabilities in Siemens c -Protect system. Uh, part of vulnerabilities already fixed by the vendor. Okay, and we know that especially for Japan, uh, energy is very important. It's highly important part of your life. And on the internet, we can find out the map of energy stations. And one interesting uh, information about energy stations is how much energy they produce and uh, also location of this station. Well, f following this information, we found out some solar plants and the picture you can see, Yukishima, and also Kagoshima uh, solar power plants. Well, what about Kagoshima? It's, it's created by Kyocera, as I know, and uh, with uh, SMEA vendor. As we created uh, Sunny Central big uh, station, and in diagram you can see how a Kagoshima plant works. And uh, as you know, and uh, SMEA very interesting vendor, and we find out some vulnerabilities and uh, SMEA uh, software and devices. Uh, Kagoshima produces about 70 megawatts of energy. Well, and as we mentioned before, SMEA products has uh, simple vulnerabilities like hard-coded passwords, accounts. And uh, this information public and uh, we shared with uh, this information uh, with uh, Japan CERT. Uh, so we hope uh, if it's important uh, these vulnerabilities will be fixed or already fixed. Uh, one additional point, it's number of SCADA system connected to the internet in Japan. Uh, we able to find more than 600 of uh, different SCADA PLCs, RTUs, and most of them use uh, open protocols, like industrial protocols, I mean, like Modbus, like S7, and this is not very good, why? Because such protocol does not uh, have any security features at all. But this information shared with uh, certs, and uh, I think it will help to secure such system. 
But anyway, now it's look like this. Postscriptum. When you're working with industrial security, uh, you need to have engineering mindset. Uh, I have one more question for you. Uh, which picture is bad? Number one or number two? On number one, we have uh, yellow signal. On number two, we have green signal. Which? Raise your hand. Only two guesses. It's easy. One of two can get a prize. Yeah, I have one more prize. Okay. One or two? Please, anybody. One. Okay. You're wrong. But anyway, you will get a prize. Uh, the bet is two. Green light. Why? I will uh, show later. Uh, one more example. Uh, we have a uh, super heavy trains. It's trains if, which use uh, several uh, uh, engines and radio channel to coordinate activity. And many people believe if you encrypt the radio channel, it's safe. But in general, you don't need to intercept encryption. You can just jam it. And after the jam, uh, engines will work in the wrong manner, and you can have a disaster. One more example is when you talk with industrial engineers, uh, you often can listen something. OK, our system is uh, a SEAL 4 certificate. It's safe. It cannot uh, have any disaster. And frankly speaking, what is SEAL 4? It's a certification for no probability of failure per hour or on demand, and this is very small number. So it's, this system must be safe. But if you can get remote access to this system and obtain root access to this platform in several minutes, you can make everything. You can upload firmware. You can uh, patch uh, execution way and no seal level anymore. But people still believe that computers, it's a small relays. No, it's a computers. It's managed by software. So now we know that the green light is bad. Why? Because according railway rules, green light allowed to pass the station on the maximum speed. But we have a Yellow line, this is road. Road is located on the sideway. And on the sideway, we have a curve. We have a switch. And if train will go on the maximum speed on the curve, it can get out of the rain, train. So you need to understand not only technical vulnerabilities, but also vulnerabilities of technological process to understand what you need to protect. One more postscriptum. Several years ago, we saw network convergence uh, uh, approach in different networks. So we use same technology at the moment, we use TCP. But what we see at the moment, we call it operation technology convergence. So when different operation technologies like SCADA, mobile carrier, uh, payments, uh, internet, all the things, cloud, use it for different uh, uh, system like smart grid, like public transport, like smart city. And vulnerability in any of these can create a disaster. More, it's, it can create change, uh, chain effect disaster. So, uh, for years, we speak on different confer conference for, with different topics about ATM security, about communication security, uh, about trains vulnerabilities. Uh, the goal is to demonstrate reverse perimeter. What is reverse perimeter? 
It's a concept when vulnerabilities of the air gapped device can create big disaster because people still think that these such devices are air gapped, but on practice, no. One example, you see a guy and ATM. And this uh, very good ATM because it gives a money to this guy without any interaction. Man gives a, oh, it takes a money, send SMS, and the TVM will give additional money for, to him. This is a real forensic tape from Carbonac robbery when cyber criminals able to stole about one billion of USD using different vulnerabilities on payment software. How it works? Why this ATM share money with uh, these guys? Okay, let's go use Google again, sorry, Shodan, and let's try to find ATM on the internet. It's amazing, internet, ATM, yes, but we can find it. it. This is not a challenge. It's NCR terminal running on the top of, on Windows 2000. Anybody here have a trouble to find vulnerabilities in Windows 2000? So thank you. Terrorists. These boys have simply been misguided. If somebody has questions, and put it in our reserves, just feel free uh, to ask us and during conference, or feel free to stay in touch via email, on Twitter, and so on. And again, thank you so much. And also we have prizes, don't forget. One, two, yep. <laughs> Questions, please, if you have a time. Any questions about how to get access to trains, <laughs> railway stations? Or to secure it? Or Money from my team. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. No questions. No. I think it was clear. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you so much.